the other type of non stationary come from the fact that the uh, sample may be there may be some bricks in the samples. So it's a definition of bricks. Bricks means that the population regression function changes over time. So uh, over the sample, okay, over the sample, over the sample over time. That means there is a change in the pattern of the regression, population regression functions. So we can classify two bricks. The first one is called discrete bricks, and the next and the second one is called gradual. So a discrete brick, discrete brick means that there is a sudden change in the population regression functions. So maybe there is a certain change in policies, which leads to some change in the y variables. For the gradual change, so this stands for gradual policy change. So for some policy, there may be a last for several years and change little bit by little bit. Okay. So if you want to say the structural break diagrammatically, so maybe at some time equal to tau, okay. So originally there may be a positive relation bit of the y with time, then suddenly it may become negative, okay. So in this case, if you use the OLS or you don't separate the, the break and do the regression, you may eventually find some relation like this well but this does not represent everything so a better representation should be something like this okay so in the first part it should be something increasing while in the second part something decreasing so you should separate the regression in two cases if they a break okay so how to test there is a break but well, you need to test whether there, there is a break in the in the model. Okay, so this is the original the ADL model. So to test the break, you need to add some variable. Say, okay, you need to t add gamma zero times the dummy variable t at time tau. So I'm going to test whether there is a break in tau. Okay, time equal to tau. Then Apart from the intercept, you need to test the gamma 1 times d as a function of tau times yt minus 1 to see whether there is a change in the yt, the coefficient of yt, plus gamma 2 times the dummy variable t as a function of tau times xt minus 1, then plus the error term. Okay. So the, your null hypothesis is there are no bricks. That means the gamma zero equal to gamma one equal to gamma two equal to zero. Okay, if it is equal to zero, that means you should you you have you no need to change your regression model. So there are no bricks, and the alternative hypothesis this is brick at t equal to tau. Okay, then you use the usual F test. To test the break. Well, but sometimes you may you may think that oh, I suspect there is a break. I don't know whether there is a break. So if you are not sure where whether there is a break or you are not sure the break date, what should you do? So you cannot use the F test because you do not know the exact time. Therefore, you should resource to another method. So this is called the QLR test or the QLR statistics. Okay. So you what you, are, you what you are doing is the again we write the formula as gamma zero plus d t as at the time tau while plus the the remaining one. So these are the same. So if you suspect that there is a structural break and first you need, you need to find the range of the structural break say 
you suspect that there is a structural break between tau zero and tau one. Okay. So you set the limit, the lower bound and the upper bound, and you do the QLL test. QLL test stands for quant likelihood ratio statistics. <coughs> so basically, the value of Q, Q, QLL is one type of F statistics. But it's maximized the value of f given the time is tau zero. Then again, one period after the tau zero, then two period after the tau zero, up to tau one. So QR our statistics look for the maximum of the f statistics of the whole inter of the whole time interval. Okay. So after you calculate the, after you calculate the QLR, you you have to compare some critical value. So similar to the F test and T test. After you calculate the value, you compare with the, with the, significant level. Okay. And the critical value depends on how many restriction you are, you have. So say if you only have one restriction, so this is number of restriction Q, okay. So with different number of restriction, there will be different number of critical value. And for one percent, the requirement is greater. Okay. So if you calculate the critical value in which this is greater than this point, you will say that there is a structural break. Okay. So there is an example. Okay. So there is an example. So uh. In the United States, there are some research based on the year 1962 to 2004. The inflation rate is some value, a function of changing inflation rate and the unemployment rate. So this is the Phillips curve equations. Okay, so to test whether there is, there is a structural break, you need to calculate the F statistics. So the in so the QLR statistics for 1980 is 2.85. Okay, so there there are actually five restrictions because the intercept and all the unemployment one two three four five. Okay, so there are five restrictions. You look at the this value, then you can see in nineteen eighty the F statistics is just two point eight five, which is smaller than the critical value. Therefore, there are no break, no structural breaks here. Where is nineteen eighty one? The F statistics is 5.16. That means there is a structural break. At least one structural break happens in 1981. So this is how you can test whether there is structural break.